What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cornar? Oh, hey there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review. Today, I'm very excited to check it out Res Publica 2230 AD from Reiner Nitzia and Mage Company. This is for three to five players. Take you about an hour to play. It's for ages 10 plus. And in Res Publica 2230 AD, this is a space themed game, and it's really more of a set collection game with a little bit of engine building and a lot of trading going on in this game. It's Reiner Nitzia, which means the theme is somewhat pasted on, but the gameplay and mechanics make up for that. Let's open it up and I'll tell ya. Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Res Publica 2230 AD. So first and foremost, we've got our handy dandy rule booklet. It is, let's see, it's 29 pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, and as you can see, the last like 8 to 10 pages are just flavor text about all the different races. And it's a poorly done rule booklet. It, it's, it will have you, it can get you up and running, but it's going to be frustrating and things are in different spots than they feel like they should be and some of the English is a little bit confusing and there'll be a couple rules where you're like I'm not quite sure but we're doing this right but I think so so the rule booklet really could use a touch up if they do a second edition of the game so in Res Publica 2230 AD what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to collect different sets of race cards which are going to be these cards right here and as you can see, uh, they will have different symbols on them and different names. The names are important because that's what you're going to be using when you start trading. And the symbols are important because you're going to be using those to collect various different sets. You're trying to collect uh, different sets of these cards to build some of these buildings right here, which will give you uh, victory points and potentially special abilities. But we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Also, we have tech cards up here, which are going to be the green cards, which very similarly will have a name at the bottom, so you can do the trading and also a symbol up here because there are set collection aspects to there. Now, there are also some take that cards mixed in there, uh, the trooper and the pilot mixed in with the race cards, which are going to be like wild cards. They don't come up too terribly often, but when they do, it's a nice little surprise, especially when you get the pilot, because those are great for using as wild cards. So in this game, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to get the most points by building buildings and then eventually being able to achieve four different objectives, uh, four different missions, as they're called right here. And I'll go over the missions real quick. So build two space stations to get seven victory points. Now, a space station is going to be one of these cards right here. And in order to build a space station, all you have to do is have five of any of the race cards. So the same, a set of five of the race cards. So you could have five Demacros, you could have five uh, Orinopians, or any of the combination of the above. So you're trying to have five of these guys right here. In addition to unlocking a space station, a space station is going to get you victory points, so it'll get you three victory points right there, but it will also allow you to start drawing tech cards, because at the beginning of the game, you're only going to start drawing race cards, so it does have a little bit of an engine building right there. So that's the first mission you need to build two space stations. You're going to want to do that anyway, so that's probably going to happen. Next, you're going to complete three trades in your round to get three victory points. When it says in your round, that means on your turn, because this game is going to be doing a lot of trading, both on your turn and on other people's turn. This one specifically just means makes it so that you need to trade on your turn, and you will unlock victory points, and, that, and then you'll be one-fourth there towards ending the game as well. Next, build two cities to get five victory points. Cities are another one up here, and these ones are going to require five of the same kind of tech cards. So as you can see, there's lots of symbology in the game. When you first start, it's a little bit confusing, but once you know what's going on, it's very convenient symbology. So this one, you just need five of the same kind of tech, and you will get nine victory points. And that's really all this is going to do, in addition to hopefully helping you complete part of your mission. Now, when it comes with the cities, the, uh, the amount of victory points you're going to get is going to decline. So the first person to build the city will get 9 points. The last person to do it is only going to get 4 points. So you want to try and jump on those a little bit early if that's your strategy. Uh, the next, or the final mission you can complete is to just play 5 unique technology cards to get 5 victory points. So as we mentioned, the technology cards, there's a bunch of different ones. So you just need 5 different symbols on these cards. You display those, you discard those, you flip that over, and you get the victory points. And that is one way that you could potentially end the game by flipping over all four of your different planets with their different missions. Now everyone's going to have the same missions in this game, so there's no crazy out there uh, missions. It's completely symmetrical in that aspect. So that's one way you can end the game. The other way you can end the game is when all of the race card, or when all the tech cards run out because everyone has drawn them. 
So let's go over all the different cards in the middle, and then I'll show you a little bit of gameplay, and we'll get out of here. We'll tell you what my thoughts on it. So we went over the city. That one's just going to get you straight up victory points and also potentially complete a mission. And this one's going to require five of the same tech cards. We went over the space, space station. This one's going to allow you to draw tech cards, and it's going to require five of the same race cards. Next we have resorts. And resorts are going to give you just seven victory points. But they're only going to require three, but they require three of a special type of race, which don't come up too terribly often. I believe they're called Athurians, I want to say. Not quite sure uh, about that one. Let's see. Uh, we can look on here, which has our race icon, which is very, very useful. And we see that that is, yeah, it is the Aturians. Uh, I just mispronounced it. So that one's going to be victory points. Next, you have a new colony, which is one of the two really special cards that will give you a superpower, a special ability. As you can see, there's only two of these, so only two people are going to be able to have this ability in the game. But you're going to need three of the same kind of green race car or tech cards and three of the same kind of yellow race cards. You're going to turn those in, and then you will gain a new colony, which will allow you to discard two of your cards to take one card from the discard pile. So essentially, once per turn, you're going to be able to get whatever cards you want out of the discard pile, which is incredibly useful. Next, we have the university. This one is going to cost you three of this little beaker right here, which, much like the, uh, the Aturians, is going to be a little bit harder to come by. And if you can build this university, it's not going to give you any victory points, but it's going to allow you to display only four technology to build a city instead of five. So uh, everybody else is going to have to build five. With five, you're only going to have to build with four. So that's pretty useful. So those are all the cards you're going to have out there. Next component-wise, we got our trading tokens right here. These are just to help you keep track of uh, how many trades you have made on your turn. Because as we mentioned, if you can make three, then you get a flip over this guy right here, gain three victory points, and potentially be one-fourth of the way to ending the game. So when you first start the game, you are going to start off with only race cards, and that's it. And what you're going to do on your turn, I'll take you through a mock turn. It's really quite simple. You're going to first trade. So we would obviously be looking for Ornopian. So that is what we want. So we would say uh, we can either go, I would like Ornopians, or you could say, I will trade Aturians. And you can say one or more. Uh, you can say a specific number. You can do it however you want. But when you're trading, you are only able to mention two kinds of races. You can't say, I would like to trade an Ornopian for an Aturian or for a tech or for this or for that. Uh, the back, the, the trade has to be one or two races is all you can mention. So once you've said what you're going to offer or what you are going to will it, hoping to receive, everyone else is going to have a turn to make a counteroffer. Now these trades don't have to be equal. So let's say somebody really wants an Aturian. They would say, oh, I will trade you two race cards. Uh, if, say for instance you offered the Aturian. Or somebody might say, I will offer you a tech and a race card or any combination of the sort. Once everybody has offered you a trade, you can either choose to accept one of their trades, or you can just end your turn, and you can draw a new card. So normally, you only get to draw one race card. However, once you get space stations out, so let's say you've built a space station, you'll get to draw one race card, and you'll get to draw one tech card. If you have two space stations out, you'll get to draw one race card, as always, and two tech cards. Now, if you have three space stations out, this is where it gets interesting because you can only draw three cards at a maximum on your turn. So you can either draw three tech cards or two tech cards and one race card. So that's completely up to you. But obviously you want to be drawing more cards because that means you're going to be able to trade more and that means you're also going to be able to build the different structures quicker. Uh, last but not least, I forgot to mention this, you can also use uh, display your cards and that's essentially just setting out a set. So let's just say, let's pretend that I have five Ornopians. So before the end of my turn, actually before I drew a new card, I would say, all right, I have my five Ornopians. I would put them right there. And then I would build a space station, which would allow me then to draw one and one. But anywho, you're going to continue to go around trading, using card effects, displaying your cards, and then drawing new cards, and then rinse, wash, and repeat, doing it over and over again until someone has completed all four of their missions or until all of the race cards run out, at which point you are going to tally up your points, total up the points, and, I, and that's one thing I forgot to mention in the pros and the cons. I really like how easy the scoring is in this game. Whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of Res Publica 2230 AD, and that, in a crazy jumbled nutshell, is how the game is played.
Right then, Rex Publica 2230 AD from Ryder Nizia and Mage Company. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros, let's go to the cons. First, on the con side, the game's not going to be for everybody for a couple of different reasons. Three to five players, so it does have a restricted player count. Also, three players is just okay. I feel like this game really shines at four and five players, which gives it an even more restricted player count. Also, if you don't like trading, or if people in your gaming group do not like trading, you're probably going to want to steer clear of this game. Now, I'm going to give this game a great recommendation, but that's because the trade is what really makes this game shine. So if you have someone in your gaming group who's that guy in Settlers of Catan who doesn't trade anything ever and everybody secretly hates him, then you are going to want to steer clear of this game because it will drag out the game. And that player will also lose terribly most of the time, I would imagine. Uh, there's also luck. There's a good deal of luck with which cards you happen to draw and if you start off with wild cards, various different stuff like that. Now, I mentioned wild cards. There's not too many in the deck. and There's a, there's a little tiny bit of take that, which some people might not like, but there's not too much of that and it's not crippling by any stretch of the imagination which I did like. Uh, next, theme. Theme is completely transparent. It's completely pasted on, so don't get excited because it's a space game. Even though the artwork and components is really nice, I'll talk about that in the pros, but the theme is completely pasted on. Last but not least, last big con that I have of this game is the rule booklet. It is poor. It is bad. It is not well done. And when you first start playing this game, you are going to get frustrated because rules feel like they should be in point A, but they're actually in point C, and then in point C they're missing something from point B, and it's unclear about exactly what it says, and there's like one, there's like one paragraph in here that, that we literally, when, I'm not exaggerating, when we first learned in the game, I read it out loud verbatim, which I don't typically do, and we all started laughing hysterically because they just repeated themselves. It was... Yeah, the rule booklet's bad. Mage Company makes some fun games. I've enjoyed the games that I've played from them, but they just really need someone who speaks good English to take an hour with their rule booklet and just start poking holes and say, put this here, fix this, fix that, poke that here. That's all they need, and this rule booklet could have been fantastic. They even f put in a bunch of bloatware garbage about the theme of the game, about all the different races in the game in the back. They tried to make it a good rule booklet, and they failed. And that's unfortunate because, moving on, despite the poor rules, despite the pasted on theme, despite the restrictive player count, and despite the stupid name, Res Publica 2230 AD is one of my favorite games of 2015. Yeah, you're surprised, I'm surprised, we're all surprised. Everybody we played this with was surprised, but this game really blew our socks off, and there's one big reason why, and that is because this game has the funnest trading in any game I have ever played. <laughs> the, the, the trading in this game is just wild, wild west, shootout, just throwing out crazy offers. Uh, I think we're doing it correctly, because uh, we just make it because there's two major rules in here, where you, you can you can offer one or more cards. Uh, you can't mention more than two kinds of cards, and you can't. Essentially, the trading is very simple, but the rules make it like so it's a little bit more confusing than it needs to be. But they also have like this little clause where it's like you'll come up with your own kind of house rules. So I'm going to assume we're doing it correctly, which in that case, <laughs> the trading is just so much fun. So essentially, on every single turn, someone is going to make a trade most of the time. They'll either offer cards or they will ask to receive cards, at which point everyone else at the table gets to make an offer, and then that person gets to try and, and accept one of those trades or not accept one of those trades. And the trades are just so much fun, especially as you get deeper into the game and you unlock more cards, and you're just like, you know what, I'm going to offer five tech cards out there. I'm just offering five tech cards, and they're like, okay, well, I'm going to do this or this or this. I, oh, I can't get enough of that. The trading in this game is just pure and simple fun. You got that, though. I'm, I'm done beating a dead horse there. Uh, other than that, I really enjoyed the, the slight bit of engine building because there's different ways to go about it. You get a new colony, you get a university, you just try and stack up tech cards, you try and make your way through trade. Uh, I like that quite a bit. I also like how the four planet tiles kind of uh, encourage you to do certain things. Like, I really thought it was ingenious that you get extra points, and that's one of the ways that you can end the game, is if you do the trading, which just encourages people to be more loose with the trading. When we were trading, everybody had their three tokens pretty quickly, just because it was so much fun. I think maybe about six times around the table, we had all traded at least three times, because the trading is oh, so much fun. Uh, artwork's fantastic. Um, Components are really, really nice. It's easy to teach. It's not easy to learn when you're first starting with the rule booklet, but the game itself is actually a very simple set collection game. 
uh, once you understand how the trading works, it, it, this game is really going to fly by. It plays pretty briskly. It says it's an hour, and I'd say that's about right, but it doesn't feel like an hour because you're having so much fun. So overall, Res Publica 2230 AD, golly, from Mage Company. This is one of my surprise hits of 2015. I really enjoy this game, and if you enjoy player interaction, and if you enjoy trading, and you routinely hit four or five players, this is a game that I think you need to try out, and you need to get on your shelf. So that is Rest Republica 2230 AD from Reiner Nitzi and Mage Company, one I highly recommend. This has been my, uh, this is my, my re review of the game. If you enjoyed my reviews, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below and in the comments below. Let me know trading in real life. Do you like to trade in real life? I'm trying to think of an adult situation where I trade much. I trade a lot with my son, but that's really just to teach him the basic skill of trading. But I think in my day-to-day -day life, I don't trade too much, but I think it'd be cool. I'd like to trade more. I just, the, the situation just does not arise that much when you're a grown-up. But let me know in the comments below. Do you trade a lot and do you enjoy trading? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.